We have been in a biking phase. <laughs> Sometime in the middle of quarantine, we got Super 73 bikes that charge electronically. And it's wonderful because you can bike slash just kind of ride and enjoy it. This morning we went to like a little breakfast diner. We sat down, we read. <sighs> I've been so into joint reading. I feel like I'm always reading either in the morning or right before bed, but making it an actual activity and doing it with another person is so cute. More joint reading in August. I'm gonna pop in some AirPods. I think I'm gonna listen to a podcast. This is what I'm going with. Cue the cleaning montage. New England vegan lobster rolls. And? I enjoy it. Whoa. That's amazing. I don't know if I've ever had parts of um... palm like this. Mm -hmm. It kind of does taste lobstery. Wow. You guys know how much I love doing little house updates and things that we've either found or changed or moved around. We just recently kind of finished our bedroom. There's been significant changes with this side and specifically the closet as well. I just feel like we know what we're doing now. We know the space. For a while it was like a big question mark and it was kind of the last room left that needed our attention. We can call this a little bedroom tour, closet tour update. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. We're gonna do a quick thread up haul. Today I'm working with thread up, which you guys know is one of my favorite places to shop at ever. And you guys, I found so many good pieces. Oh my God. Oh my God. This time I'm gonna a lot of like Lizzie McGuire energy. The last one felt very Cameron Diaz and I think I said like hot next door neighbor. Thread Up is an online thrift and consignment store. They have over 40,000 different brands, new arrivals every single day and you can sell your clothes and also purchase clothes. If you're trying to clean out your closet, the process is super easy. You just request a clean out bag from Thread Up. They ship it over to you. You fill it up with clothing. You send it back. It's that easy. You can find things for up to 90% off. I will also be giving you guys a promo code at the end of this bit so stay tuned for that the item that I'm first starting with I can't wear right now because I have to wait until it's colder outside fabulous absolutely fabulous this faux leather jacket is from Andrew Mark and the estimated retail price is $695 and I got it for $135.99 there is really just nothing to say because I think the jacket speaks for itself it's incredible I love the fur collar holy crap this jacket is unbelievable this skirt is so cute, so cute. I'm still deciding if I want to have it fitted to sit a little bit higher or have it as like a low waist, kind of mid-rise skirt, but I just thought the shape of it was stunning. I love the rainbow colors. This actually kind of reminds me of like 13 going on 30 also. This skirt is from Tibby, retail price $425, and I got it for $94.99. We got a lot of skirts, we did. Love the pattern so much, it feels very very zebra but also very kind of groovy it fits great I love where it sits the length of it is perfect this skirt is from Banana Republic it originally it was $60 and I got it for $18.99 this is a pool party skirt if I've ever seen a pool party skirt before it is made out of that terry cloth towel material I believe that's what it's called I love the length of it it says Kira sunshine estimated at $214 and I got it for $38 99. The last skirt that I got is this pink diagonal striped skirt. I love the length of this. I just love how feminine it feels. Love the cut of it so much. This is by the brand Laundry. Estimated at $167 and I got it for $41.99. That is Lizzie. I'm sorry. These two items I got for under $15, which is always exciting. This Calvin Klein hat still with the tag on, $11.99, estimated at $35, and I just love the colors. I love the print on the front. I would wear this hat with like a maxi skirt and a crop top. Is that weird? I don't know. That is cute. Sparkly Speedo flip-flops. Come on, I'm into them. Estimated at $24 and I got them for $14.99. I'm really trying to sell you guys on these. I don't know. I don't know what the general opinion will be, but I like them. We got some low rise jeans. I know, you guys saw it. We all saw it coming. These are from Hudson and they are a very, very dark blue wash. 
and they flare out a little bit at the bottom. Wonderful, wonderful fits. Retail price $190 and I got these for $36.99, which is crazy. Um, oh my god, how could I forget? These I might have to sell you guys on. We might be getting mixed feelings here, but for me, these are hot. We have some Harley Davidson studded wedges. But the phone case, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The estimated retail price was $179 and I got them for $50.99. As mentioned before, I have a special promo for you guys. If you want 30% off of your first order, then just use the code Claudia at checkout. Very easy. Obviously, it will be linked down there. I am so excited to hang all of this in my closet and curate some outfits. Thread up, I love you guys so much. I love working with you guys. This is amazing. Let's hang these guys up. Walking in, this is what you first see. And I just feel like we finally figured out the space. We figured out the direction that we want to head into. A lot of this hasn't changed. These chairs have been here for a while. We got them from Sunbeam Vintage, which is like a secondhand vintage furniture store out here. These pillows are ancient. They're from Target. I think we're gonna switch them up with something colorful and more exciting, but right now we just have them there. I got this glass coffee table also from Sunbeam Vintage, and the funny thing is when I first bought it, I wasn't planning on putting it in this room. I don't know what I thought I was gonna do with it, but I was just like, oh, I have to have this. This is so beautiful. Now it like separates the room. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, great. We have the bed and we have this little living space. Like now we actually use these chairs. I'm realizing everything is from Sunbeam, but this dresser is also from the same store. If you guys remember, I used to have like a white modern dresser here. It was the one that I had in my last place. And it was just, you know, very West Elm, very modern, very that vibe, which is just not this house. There's a lot about this guy that is imperfect and worn in and I think that is what this room needed. I love how the top of this dresser kind of sets a little bit further back than this chunk. Like, I don't know, there's just something about it. I love the shape. Everything that we already had on top of the other one goes perfectly with this. What style would you guys say this dresser is? Like, is this mid-century? It's giving me kind of mid-century, but also a little bit of something else. I don't know, I can't put my finger on it, but I am in love with it. Let's move on to the star of the show. Maybe I'll start here. This is the smaller closet, as you guys know. I did go in here and just kind of reorganize like the bins at the top. They don't look that organized right now, but we went through all of our shoes, all of our sweaters, everything. This step ladder isn't very cute, but it is very essential. Yeah, I've kind of gone through everything in my closet, color-coded most of it. Yeah, this sort of screams like organized chaos, but it's good enough for me, I'm fine with that. I, wow, you guys, I mean, are you taking this in? Because we've got a showroom. Truly, like, that's what I feel like this looks like. Let's back it up. So, okay, for starters, points for the boyfriend. He found this rug while I was gone, and it's perfect. Here's my side of the closet. Starting over here, I've got all of, like, my fitted t-shirts, everything that covers my shoulders, long sleeve shirts, and then just, like, all of my t-shirts t-shirts, baggier t-shirts, shirts that I sleep in. Right above that, I have all of my tank tops. We have so many of those. I've tried to sort of color coordinate them. In here, I've got like shorts, bras, leggings, workout items, essentially just all athleisure. Here we have crew necks, zip up sweatshirts, a couple of hoodies. Up here I have my jeans because I wear jeans so often, so they kind of go, well, I guess they should start like light blue to dark blue to gray and then black, so I should like switch, that's just fine, whatever. <laughs> um, and then I just have my shorts folded underneath there. In these two drawers, the thing that I've done wrong for so long, that rhymed, is I always had my sweatpants in here, and I wear sweatpants every single day, no matter what I'm wearing on top. Like, it's just what I wear at home. And so these drawers were never organized because it's just hard to like fold sweatpants and keep them tidy and I have a lot of like matching sweat sets and different hooded sweatshirts I have squeezed all of them into these drawers which is great because if I need one I can see all of them and pull them out and now I keep all of my sweatpants in here and it's just like easier to reach easier to organize and it used to be vice versa like I had all my hooded sweatshirts here and I never like utilize this I don't know if is this interesting to you guys at all I don't know <laughs> Here I just have like bras, underwear, 
socks. Let's address this sexy wall we have going on here because for a while, we felt like we couldn't cover up these windows because they were allowing in so much light. We always say that we'd have them open, but in reality, we like never had these curtains open because it obviously reveals too much when we're like changing in here. And for a while, like in the center of this wall, we had this little nightstand with like Phineas's weights on it and stuff. And it was like the first thing that you saw when you walked into the bedroom. Then randomly one day, I bought a rack for this closet because I just needed more space. And so I had one. And then I wanted it to be symmetrical, so I think then we added one for him, and we had two, and then randomly like the dresser. So then at that point I thought, well, let's just fill up the whole wall with racks, make it look seamless, make it look purposeful, because there was something very like random and chaotic about it before, but now that we have four identical racks, filling up the whole space, it looks really intentional, and I don't know, like more organized and thought out, thought through, I guess. So on my side, I have all of my buttons button up shirts, all of like my my white button downs, button ups, button downs, same thing, I don't know. I keep my short dresses right here, my long ones are in the closet in my office. I have all of my nice sneakers down there and then a lot of just like my everyday boots up here so that they're easy to grab and also they're taller so they don't fit in the other closet. And then you know, he's doing his thing right here, being respectful about it. We love an organized closet. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. Do a little bit of this action, which we never do by the way, but oh my God. This is feeling very adult, very sexy, very sophisticated, very intentional, into it, hardcore into it. Quick poll, is it more exciting to finish a book or finish a journal? I started a new one at the top of this year, as one does, and uh, finally finished it. So this is the new one. This is from Moleskin, which I feel like is the most popular types of notebook. I don't know, but I loved this color. Truly, if I'm looking at the first half of this year, it is so crazy how much growing I feel like I've done just as an individual. I can definitely think going to therapy. It's now been like a few months and every single week I cry. But also every single week I have these revelations and just learning about why we do certain things, react in certain ways, fear certain things, all that stuff without oversharing because I'm just uninterested in that. But you know, I think everyone like grows up with this tool belt of their survival skills or like whatever they needed to learn how to quickly do in order to feel loved and safe and, and all these things, right? Positive or negative, but I'm in this period of my life where I am questioning every response that I have or how certain things make me feel or certain situations because it's been crazy connecting the dots and just seeing like what is a complete reflection of my childhood. And a lot of these things are habits too, like they just become a part of your your genetic makeup and you think that this is how you're gonna be for the rest of your life. And I'm sort of like unlearning and realizing that I can restructure my self-identity and like my nervous system. Getting personal here, but I think, I believe, my personal greatest fear is letting people down. That's kind of a vague and general umbrella. So underneath that, I hate being the reason any sort of conflict arises. Yeah, hate letting people down and also really worry about being misunderstood. Like I panic and I stress when I feel like someone thinks of me in a way that is different from my true being. I remember telling you guys a little bit about this and sort of the whole concept of like saying yes and no to things. I'll try to link that video down below if you guys haven't seen that one, but that totally falls under that. Uh, one of the newer <laughs> discoveries for me, my relationship with texting. Texting really stresses me out. I think it stresses me out more than it should because I never want to let people down like whoever is in front of me in the moment I put 100% of myself into them and focus you know so I'm like never on my phone I put my phone down and I want to be a good listener and a good storyteller and all these things and receiving a text message is kind of like my stressor and my body indicating oh here's another person that you need to give your full focus to and so I like treat texting like this ultimatum like important thing when in reality it's really casual but for me like if I receive a text message if I'm busy in that moment and know that I can't respond exactly how I want to respond and give it the care and attention that I believe it deserves 
I will just not respond because I'm like, well, I can't do that because I'm with this person. And then if too much time passes, in my head, I, I'm not doing this consciously, like I'm not realizing it, but I think in my head, I'm like, I already have taken so much time to not respond to this that now the duration and my response time is not perfect or it's not, I don't know, it's gonna let the person down. And so like sometimes I will genuinely not respond because I'm like, well, it's already too late, like I've already failed. And so then I cut myself short and I like give myself this dead end. And I don't feel that way about everything, but for some reason texting, I think because it's, there's another person on the other side of it. I just have this desire to like genuinely connect with everyone and if it feels half-assed or distracted or short, it feels fraudulent to me. Something I've had to practice and like the homework that my therapist gave me a few weeks ago and now I am just trying my best at like keeping up with it. The sort of challenge she gave me was like when you get a text, you know, unless you're driving or you're like in a situation where it's rude to be picking up your phone, but if you're at home or you're hanging out or you're doing work, whatever, you get a text, She's like, right now, I want you to respond to it. Even if it is liking the text or a one word response, she was like, I want you to respond because your body, when you receive a text, your body is saying, I have to respond to this, but I can't right now. And she's like, eventually you'll get to a point where you'll receive a text message and you'll say, I can respond to this, but I don't want to right now. Wait, is that what she said? I can't respond to this, but I have to. Yeah, and then I can respond to this, but I don't want to, yes. And it all becomes a game of like giving versus pleasing, which is a thing that I'm also always asking myself because when you're coming from a place of giving, that means that you have enough of yourself to share, right? Your tank is full, your heart is full, you are coming from a place of love and genuinely wanting to connect with someone or give your time to someone or be generous in whatever capacity. So that's like giving, that's like a win-win situation. You give something that you have to give, to share with, you know? And pleasing is very much like an I lose, you win situation. You are taking from yourself when you don't have enough but you are sacrificing, whether it's your time, your energy, your inner peace, and you're still sacrificing that to please someone because of whatever fear you have, right? Fear of abandonment, fear of worthiness, fear of not being loved. And for me, it's like fear of being misunderstood because I always want people to know that like, I'm a good person. Like, it's just, it's so silly that one fear can creep into so many aspects of your life. Like, I just always thought that I was a shitty texter, when in reality, texting triggers something inside of me that stresses me and, and puts me into a headspace that pulls me from like my, my true self. It suddenly becomes this priority and this, and this responsibility and I can relieve myself of that stress over time because texting is casual. You don't have to send someone a novel back or perfectly curate the emojis and you know, for this person they type all lowercase so let me do this lowercase or this person loves caps. It's like, it's so interesting when we find ourselves whether it's like code switching or matching energy or whatever and I think a lot of it is like normal and it's super aware and a lot of it is helpful but finding that fine line of like okay now I am pleasing versus giving or whatever the case may be but that's been super interesting for me I'm personally finding that it is really important to not be hard on yourself because I now catch my habits and sort of the conversations I have in my own head that can be self-destructive. It's so frustrating for me to catch it and like notice myself doing it, whether it was like a few minutes ago or the next day realizing it and being like, oh my God, like how can I actually grow out of that and like reteach myself that, you know, I can be a little bit more selfish. Like so often I'm so scared of being viewed as this selfish person. And so I make selfless decisions in fear of people thinking that I'm one way. And sometimes it's like okay to choose yourself and it's okay to let someone down because you're deciding to choose yourself. I have never allowed myself to live that way or have that sort of care free kind of attitude about making decisions like it's always been okay but let's put everything into factor and let's make sure everyone feels seen and heard and happy and it's exhausting it's i've been doing it my whole life and it's exhausting and i think that's 
part of growing up, right? It's just realizing like, oh my God, you really have to do you because everyone is worrying about their own shit. And all it does is just make you not be on your own team. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to be my teammate. Let me know what you guys have been realizing <laughs> lately and learning about yourself because I just think it's really fascinating. I actually literally have therapy in an hour and a half. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and thank you to ThreadUp for working with me. If you guys want 30% off of your first order, all you have to do is use my code, Claudia, at checkout and I will have the link in the description box, of course. I'll see you guys for a new video very soon. Bye!